take off. So who wants to know how to supersize your business without working yourself to death? I know I did. I want to make a quick warning here. You're going to want to stay to the end of this. You're going to want to hang out because I'm going to share with everybody who stays to the end a free supersize your business surprise. And I'm not going to tell you what the surprise is because if I tell you, then it's not a surprise. But I guarantee that it'll help you take your business to the next level. I want to make a quick earnings disclaimer. You're not going to 10x your business overnight. I just wanted to stop working 70 plus hours a week and get some sleep. It seems like I went about 20 some years, probably closer to 30, because I'm pretty old, pajama grandma, um, that I actually went on four hours sleep a night or less. I longed to actually experience the freedom that I dreamt about when I took the entrepreneurial leap of faith and started my own business. I wasn't ready to give up on my dream of doing what I want, when I want, where I want, and with whomever I want. That's why I started my business in the first place. It turns out I didn't have to, and neither do you. But it's not just me. Here's what James had to say. Our real estate office was getting pounded by the competition in our area. We couldn't seem to get listings to save our souls. A mutual friend told me about Sharon. I figured we had to do something or we were gonna be in big trouble. After working with Sharon for just one session, I was able to begin turning things around. After a couple of months, we had 23 new listings in our three-person office, over $6 million of real estate listings. Now, I'm gonna ask you to do me a huge favor as you're listening to this. Could you please, I'm gonna share some really cool tricks and mind hacks or mind, you know, mind tricks and, and competitive analysis things and tips and tricks and strategies. And some of these could be actually used to harm other businesses or harm other people. Sometimes we think people have hurt us in the past and we want to get back at them. If that's you, this is not the place for you because I need you to promise that you're not going to use any of the things that I teach you for evil, that you'll just use them to supersize and make your business exactly what you want it to be. And you can always do that without harming anybody else or without hurting anybody else. So if a couple of you could put in the comments box, I promise to be good or I am good, not evil or something that would make me feel a lot better and put my mind at ease. So who is this for? I'm gonna be really upfront here and say, if you are a brand new person and you haven't started your business yet, if you haven't taken that leap of faith, you might as well sign off now because you're not ready for this yet. What I have to offer is more advanced than for somebody that hasn't even started their business yet. If you have started your business, if you have taken that leap of faith, if you have, even if you're really struggling, but if you've actually begun taking action and doing something to work on your business and build your business, then you're absolutely in the right place. But if you haven't done anything yet, and if you're still waiting to start, or you can't decide what kind of business you wanna be in, or who you wanna work with, this is not gonna be the training for you. This is not gonna be the webinar for you. And of course, it's a webinar, so I'm going to offer something at the end, and I know for sure that wouldn't be for you. So although you might get something out of this webinar because I've got some incredible content, I don't think that this is what you need right now for your business. Anyway, if that isn't you, if you're still with me, anybody who's been in business for a little while and is looking to grow, change things up, figure out what to do or what to do next, then this is for you. Um, any business that exchanges, any type business, I just brainstormed a quick list here, but any type of business, either online or off, I, I noticed I didn't really put, oh yeah, I've got some online things on there. Um, but, you know, I come from a very strong manufacturing background and retail background and restaurants and bars and a lot of brick and mortar businesses. But this works as well for them as it does for people with online businesses. Actually, yep, just as well. So if that's you, if you've started your business already, then this, then, then you're in the right place. I don't, I don't wanna scare everybody away, but I do wanna scare away the people that I absolutely positively know that this isn't for. So my goal for this web class, I wanna help people who wanna make the world a better place by creating supersized businesses without working themselves to death. No wasting time, money, energy on shit that just doesn't work. And if swearing offends anybody, you might want to sign off too. I'm not going to swear a lot, but 
every once in a while, it's true. You just got to call a spade a spade and be upfront about there's stuff that we do in our businesses that's just totally unnecessary. And I want to help people that want to make the world a better place. Now, we get to define how we want to make the world a better place, but if you in some way, shape, or form don't want to contribute to society and the world through your business, then you probably want to sign off too because I'm not going to be your cup of tea or your cup of coffee. But here's my promise for you and my goal for this web class. I want to show you that the only way for you to make your world a better place is by supersizing your business. And that the only way to do that is through supersized business secrets. So who the heck is Sharon horn Elstrom, a.k.a. Pajama Grandma, and why should you listen to her? Now you'll notice in this picture, I'm not in my pajamas, and I will be totally honest, I'm not in my pajamas right now. Only because I'm babysitting my daughter's dogs, and I just took them to the dog park. And I believe that if I showed up at the dog park in my pajamas, someone with white coats might come to get me. Maybe not. I've been other places in my pajamas and my bathrobe, but uh, I don't push that envelope all the time. And you might be thinking, well, what the heck does pajamas have to do with anything? I'll share a little bit about that later on, but it has to do with me being able to work where I want, when I want, with whomever I want, how I want, and how I want happens to be in my bathroom in my pajamas a great majority of the time. But I spent 25 years plus as a corporate executive in multiple industries, uh, predominantly personal care and food and labels and ice and that type manufacturing. But 25 years working as a corporate executive in quality, I did a gig in sanitation that I inherited at my last job, but that was in addition to being the director of quality. So it's director of quality and sanitation. Very exciting stuff. Um, but I've worked in different industries and I will tell you the secret is there is a lot of power and a lot of knowledge that comes from industry hopping. It's frowned upon within certain industries, but I'll tell you what, it shows you so much more of what's possible as an employee and then as a business owner as well, because you get a picture of what works in one industry and then you can take that knowledge and that strategy to another industry and you can be a superstar because they've never seen it before. But, you know, business is business, people are people. And so things that work in one industry often work in another industry. I spent 40 years, actually 45, as a business owner. I started my first business when I was 13. It was an ice business. And I've been involved in, in a lot of different businesses since then. Everything from fireworks to rodeos to liquor to um, restaurants, bars, food manufacturing, 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 um, you name it. I not I, I won't say you name it. I've probably had my finger in it, but I have definitely been involved in a lot of different industries. Oh, real estate. I didn't even say real estate. Lots of real estate. And I put on here $797,491 in one day because that is my own personal best so far sales in a day that I am personally 100% responsible for. And so that, of course, is not my end goal, but I am still pretty proud of that. And I'm working toward a much bigger number as my one day sales goal. But that's that's the best one I've accomplished so far. I actually have an engineering, industrial mechanical engineering, marketing and management degree. I know weird, but I have always loved learning and I liked going to college, much to my parents dismay. But uh, I did finally graduate. <laughs> with three degrees, so they they laugh about that. And to be honest, I haven't really used much of those degrees throughout my corporate career. Maybe a little more so in my own businesses, but in my corporate career, I've done maybe a handful of engineering projects. Never really did a lot of engineering projects. Although quality, I, I went the quality route in my corporate jobs and all of those, I guess, are engineering projects and process projects, but they didn't really feel like true engineering projects to me. So I've only done like a handful of what I would consider true engineering products. But I do tend to be a nerdy engineer type. And that's okay too, because it means I'm very analytical and I make sure I've got my stuff together before I take action. I've started, failed, and succeeded at many different businesses. 
I've saved hundreds of millions of dollars for businesses, including my own. And I've also made hundreds of millions of dollars for myself and for others' businesses. Here's just some pictures of me and my family because I love them with all my heart and way, way more. And I just wanted to share and show, yes, I am a real strange person. This is me in my pajamas when I first decided that I should be pajama grandma. There's me dressed as a fairy godmother and my amazing family, five, one, two, three, four, five generations. I love those five generation pictures I've got. My kids have been lucky enough to have had lots of grandparents. So why do I care about you supersizing your business? What the heck is this all about and where did it come from? I'd like to, if you don't mind, tell you a little story. I was working for a big industrial bakery in 2003, 2004. That was my last corporate job. And one day I went into work and of course it was a Friday because these things always seem to happen on a Friday. And my boss, a super great guy, calls me into his office and basically proceeds to tell me, and, and it was funny because I was smiling the whole time and he was struggling so much to break this terrible news to me that I was gonna be laid off. The company had been sold, or we, we, it was actually still in the process of being sold, but it was pretty much a done deal. The owners were cashing out and, and going on to do other things. And it was a great, was a great deal for the owners of the company. Um, a bigger company had come along and purchased them. And in, actually in the next few years, they were repurchased about three or four times. So it was really interesting to watch that from the outside. But it meant that one day I had a job and the next day I didn't. And any way you look at it, laid off, fired, downsized, right sized, whatever, it all still feels like being fired. I mean, you got a job one day, the next day you don't. You got an income one day, the next day you don't. And I I was actually okay with it because it's happened to me before. I've been, I've been let go before. I've actually been fired once before. Um, that one was a lot more traumatic than this. So I guess it wasn't a huge shock to me to know that my position would be eliminated. I had a big department. I was by far the most expensive resource in that department from a company standpoint. And a lot of times when companies get bought by other companies, there's a combining of functions and structures and quality tends to be one of those functions that gets absorbed by the parent company. And I knew that. So I guess I... I had prepared my people for this day, but I hadn't necessarily prepared myself for this day. And I was fine, hugged everybody goodbye, packed up my office and my stuff, and hopped in my car. And I was great until I hit University Avenue. And all of a sudden, I burst into tears. I mean, I was like, what the heck? The floodgates opened, and I was just like sobbing in my car. I'm sure the car's next to me because, you know, it's traffic time. By the time I got my office cleaned out, it was the end of the regular day. And uh, so, of course, in the city, there's lots of traffic. And I you know, here I am sobbing in my car, and I've got my hairnet and my helmet still on, and my uniform because we wore hairnets and helmets in the food industry. And I'm sure people thought I was stark raving mad, which, which I didn't even really notice people around me. I mean, sometimes when you're upset and you're emotional, you don't even know or care what's going on around you. So I'm driving home, I'm you know, wiping my eyes, driving home, and I'm thinking, okay, I cannot be sobbing when I walk in the door. I've got two small children and a husband, and I think part of why I was so upset and why it hit me so hard is my husband had recently lost his job. In addition to that, we just built a brand new house, and I'm sitting in that house right now. It's not a small house. It's actually a pretty good size house. It's, you know, the garage is bigger than our last house was. So we're talking decently awesome house, right? And I'm, I'm panicking because I was the sole provider at that point and my income just disappeared in the blink of an eye. And I was like, how are we? I was thinking of all the things that were a problem. You know, how are we gonna make the house payment? How are we gonna make the car payment and the truck payment and the four wheeler payments and all the other payments that we have? How are we gonna put food on the table? How are we gonna, you know, how are the kids going to keep doing the activities that they like to do? Everything we do costs money. And I was thinking about all those crazy things and letting my mind run wild. And I, I knew I needed to calm down. So I finally took a deep breath and I said, okay, shake it off. You know what, you know what to do. Focus on what you want. 
So I started thinking about what do I want? Well, of course, I wanted to make money because we didn't have any money coming in right now and I needed to make money. I also, I wanted to hang out with my kids. I was working, you know, 70, 65, 70 hours a week for this company and I loved it. I loved my job. It was really fun, but I was missing out on a lot of my kids' lives. I was missing out on a lot of, you know, time with my husband and I was just, you know, making the company I work for a whole lot of money so they could sell for a whole lot of money. And that wasn't really helping me at all. I got a two week severance package, but I knew that wasn't going to last long, but I had to stay focused. And I, I took another deep breath and I said, okay, now I know the two things that I got to have. I got to have money. I want some more time back. What am I going to do? And I remembered something that I teach all of my employees, all of my direct reports, most of the peers that I have, and I call it my favorite PSDM system. Now, because I was in corporate America, I had to give this a fancy name and call it the PSDM system, which stands for problem solving and decision making. But really, all it is is a decision making tool that my dad taught me when I was a little girl and I carried with me throughout my entire career and actually throughout my entire life since I'm sharing it with you now. But it's one of those things that is so simple but so powerful because it's effective, because it works. And all you do is you take a piece of paper, you fold it down the middle, or you draw a line down the middle, you put a plus sign on one side, a minus sign on the other, and then you list all the reasons to do something, all the reasons not to do it. And that helps you to make a decision. I actually used this to decide if I should marry my husband or not. And he found it a couple years later. I don't know why it didn't get thrown away, but he found it and he was really mad. And I'm like, well, I married you, didn't I? But he didn't think it was very funny. So I did burn it and get rid of it. I actually just threw it away. But he was all upset because I had actually done this plus and minus thing about whether I should marry him or not. Now, since we're divorced, maybe I didn't do a very good job on my plus and minus decision-making tool. But normally, it works out really, really well. So I, I started going through this in my head. Of course, I was driving. And even in stopped traffic, I'm not going to be writing lists. But I... I started doing this exercise in my head and I was thinking about, do I want a job hunt or do I want to focus on a side business that my sister and I had been doing for, oh my gosh, it had to be 15, 20 years at this point. Um, and I thought about it. I weighed the pros and cons and I really, by the time I had gotten home, wasn't crying anymore. I was pretty calm and I had pretty much made up my mind that I wanted to work on the business. I wanted to grow the business and make sure that it was enough to support both of our families instead of competing against the new college students coming out of school and, uh, you know, going out and begging people to let me work for them for 70 hours. I mean, I just, I was tired of starting over every five years or so. About every three to five years, I would find myself starting over in a new industry and in a new career and a new job. And I always had awesome jobs and, and awesome companies that I worked for, with the exception of one. But I was getting kind of tired of it. It was getting kind of old. And I was like, maybe this is a sign that it's the time for me to really go gung-ho and help build the business. So I got home, broke the news to my husband and kids. And, you know, I don't think I told the kids that I lost my job right away. I figured that they'd be fine if mom was around a little bit. But I do remember having discussions with my husband about, you know, what are we going to do? And the two-week severance, although I really appreciated it, it didn't last long. It didn't take long for us to go from just over broke, and we were fine with me working, but once I wasn't working, we were sinking fast. And we were going to have to figure something out. And that's when I started to get a little stressed again, was, you know, having discussions with my husband what are we going to do? You know, cause he wasn't really even looking for a job. He was doing, I'm not even talk about what he was doing, but he wasn't looking for a job and I needed to really know if I needed to look for a job or if I could work with my sister in the business and we could grow that. And it was getting pretty tight because we couldn't take money out of the business yet to support my family. It had been supporting my sister's family for all those years but it, that's how we had set it up. And I'd always had a job in corporate America and didn't need money out of it. And so it was looking like we were either going to have to rob a bank, which neither of us were qualified to do, 
or I'd have to do something worse. And of course, I had to do something worse because it was my parents that we went to to ask if they could help support us while we were in this interim period of building the business up enough to make enough money to support both of our families and just to you know put food on the table, make sure we didn't lose our house or vehicles and keep the kids kind of on an even keel. It was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. Um, I was over 40 at the time, and I don't know how old you are if you're listening, probably not as old as me because I'm the pajama grandma, but I was over 40 at the time. I'd always taken care of myself and my family. I had always had my act together, and I felt, I really felt like a failure having to go and ask my dad for money. And, you know, I am so blessed and fortunate that my parents were in a position that they could help us. But every day I owed them money, it just kind of ate away at me and bothered me every single day. I, I don't know if it's a pride thing. It's probably just an ego thing. But I don't like owing people things. I just never have. But they helped us out. And I went to work building the business. I knew exactly what I had to do. I knew that I had to find a way to supersize this business and increase the profits enough so that it could support at least two of our families. And I actually, my secret was I wanted a whole lot more than that. I didn't want just a little business that would, you know, barely help us get by. I wanted to build an awesome business. So my secret plan was to figure it out, figure out how I could supersize and really grow this business. And that was, you know, this is back in 2004. So this was before, you know, the super online world of information was available to us or to me. I tried all kinds of stuff. Uh, some stuff worked, some stuff worked a little, some stuff just plain sucked. And it was a waste of, you know, my time, my energy, my money. And that was just my plan. My plan was just to figure it out. I knew there was something that I could figure out. I didn't know what it was. There was nobody to show me what to do or tell me what to do. I just knew I had to figure it out. But I soon discovered that everybody didn't want me to succeed, including my partner. Everybody didn't want to see my business grow or see the business change and grow. Um, some of my own beliefs, I realized, were getting in the way of my ability to supersize the business and help the business grow. And until I was willing to let go of them, I was struggling with different aspects of growing the business. I was doing everything the hard way. I was trying to figure it all out by myself. It said my partner didn't want the business to grow. She was perfectly happy the way it had been and would be more than happy to have seen me just go back to corporate America. Um, I didn't know who to trust. I got burned by lots of consultants and experts looking for advice and looking for help. You know, I don't like to share this story, but I spent $6,000. This was the beginning of the internet. I went to a, a seminar thing and I spent $6,000 on a website that never worked, that we never, I never got going because some gurus and experts were promising that you get this website for $6,000 and boom, it would be done and it would change your business forever. I relied on my bankers, my vendors, government people because it's in a USDA and FDA and Department of Agriculture regulated industry. And I believed naively, of course, at first, which I don't know because in corporate America, I didn't believe them. So I don't know why I would believe for my own business that they would be working for me and on my side and helping me out. And maybe it's because it was different. There is a total difference between the way government organizations treat big companies and big corporations, which I work for, and the way they treat smaller businesses. Totally different ball game. You know, not knowing what to do, trial and error, guessing, working all the time, winging it, getting burnt out. And the biggest hurdle I had was that I found myself working in the business and not on the business. And I didn't have the resources that I had in corporate America. The one big thing I missed the most about leaving corporate America was I had virtually unlimited resources at my fingertips in my corporate jobs. Um, I had all the departments of every company I worked for and the owners usually and the CEO and president 
on my side, helping me to do what it was I needed to do to help them build their organization and grow their organization and make their organization better. But when I was in this business, it was mostly just me because I was the only one that really wanted to see it grow and go. What's possible now? I told you about my awesome sales day. This is just some pictures of my life now. One of my little guilty pleasures is I love to go get my nails and my hair done. And right now I have purple mood changing nails because purple is my granddaughter's favorite color and they're just plain fun. And I can't, this is just the house that I'm talking about. Actually, you can't see the garage because that's off to the west in this picture. But one of my cars, some great people I get to hang out with, my daughter and my son traveling and um, being a photographer. But the best part of all of this supersizing my business is I got to spend the first year of my granddaughter's life being her primary caregiver while I ran an Italian food manufacturing business. Not many people can say that. So the hard way, man, it's expensive in time, energy, money, the toll it took on me. Um, I mean, I'm going to share a story about that in a little bit. That's where the death headline comes from. I didn't just pull that out of thin air and say, oh, I think that if I talk about working yourself to death, that would be a good story. No, it is my story. And I want to share that with you because part of why I'm here is I want to make sure nobody ever has to go through what I went through. It's taken me 25 years, thousands of hours of trial and error, plus experimentation to figure out how to do this, how to supersize my business in the first place. I spent six figures plus on education, coaches, because I believe in having great coaches. I've attended dozens and dozens of seminars. Um, and I want to say webinars because webinars are what we have nowadays. But back in the olden days, it was all in-person seminars, including Tony Robbins, because I love him. I've read hundreds of books and probably thousands of books now. By now, it's been thousands. I've filled tubs full of notebooks. I've been a lifelong student, and I am always learning and growing and taking notes and studying things. And as I'm moving out of this house, because I've gotten divorced, I have found that I have kept tubs worth, big, giant plastic tubs worth of notebooks of things that I've learned over the years. Okay, decades. So if you're struggling to supersize or build or grow your business, this is probably why. You might be feeling the same way I did as I began and was struggling through the process because I was definitely struggling through the process. But I found that I was overwhelmed and frustrated. I was freaking stressed out a lot. I knew I was under-resourced, overworked, and undercompensated. I didn't know what to do. I never thought I had enough time. I was rushing all the time. I felt like I was running through my life. I didn't know who to ask or who to trust for advice. I did have a couple of, of good advisors, but for the most part, I had to just figure it out. Um, I was wondering how to create the business that I had imagined when I took the leap of faith and didn't go back to corporate America and decided to grow this business in the first place. So if you're struggling, know that it is totally not your fault. If you failed to build and grow and supersize your business in the past, it is for a lot of reasons, none of which are because there's anything wrong with you that makes it your fault. I actually learned that venture capitalists, bankers, investors, government regulators, lawyers, competitors, I get why they wouldn't want to see us succeed. But these other people, they want us to believe that we can't build our business and grow our business and supersize our business without them. But it's not true. I mean, if you've ever thought that they want you to fail, you're probably right because a lot of times they do. So I'm here to show you how to supersize your business without and in spite of, in some cases, any of these people outside of your business and you. I'm going to show you the easy way in just a few minutes. I'm going to actually share and walk through a supersized strategic map and framework for one lucky business owner in about 10 minutes. You submitted your business for that, right? Well, some people did. I want to share Kelly's story with you. Sorry about the phone. I normally ask people to, to pay attention and put their phone in the other room, but since I didn't do that today, I didn't feel that I could ask other people to. Kelly was running a retail business. She was making improvements and steadily increasing her sales year over year, but she was usually pretty much experiencing maybe single-digit growth. 
and she was wanting to, to start getting ready for retirement. We worked with her and she just sold her business for five times the amount that two competitive consultants had quoted her just last year. Here's what she has to say. The changes I made in the business were minor and actually made it possible for me to work half the hours I was before. The end results, life changing. So there's this new breed, what I like to call this new breed of business owners emerging. I call them supersizers because they are doing what most people would consider impossible. They are growing their businesses at astounding rates and they're building businesses that are in their field dramatically bigger and larger and more profitable than anybody else in their field and in their industry. I call them supersizers. They're, I believe, the best hope for making this world a better place. And that is why I am all about helping them and you, if you're listening to this, to supersize and grow your business. We've actually got a, a Facebook page, a private close Facebook group. I've got an Instagram channel. I've got a Pajamagram podcast where I love to feature and interview some of the supersizing business owners because I think that they are the best example for all the other people that want to grow and supersize their business. So here's what we're going to cover today. Secret number one, how to ethically steal the secrets to living the four hour work week. And it's not with an online business. Secret number two, how to supersize your business without working yourself to death. And secret number three, how to make competition irrelevant, even in the most competitive industries and businesses. So let's hop right in and get started. Secret number one, how to ethically steal the secrets to living the four hour work week. And it's not with an online business. Some people think, I don't understand what supersizing your business even means. How am I going to do it if I don't even know what it is? Won't supersizing mean I have to work even more than I am now? Let me explain with a quick story. And I want to admit that part of my biggest personal struggle with supersizing the Italian food business was me getting over the false belief that said, and I, I firmly believe this, and it stopped me from taking the right action so many times. But I actually believed that if I was going to supersize and grow my business to a really big level, I would have to work harder, meaning I would have to do a whole lot and become and learn a whole lot of things that I wasn't ready to do because I already felt like I was working more than I could possibly work. So I want to share a couple of Tim Ferriss quotes. Tim Ferriss, uh, I think that he wrote the four hour work week in about uh, 2008, maybe. I think it's about 10 years old. So let's say 2008, thereabouts. Anyway, I didn't read it until many, many years later because I was busy growing my own business and figuring out how to supersize it. But I did come across it years later when I wanted to study and research and do some more in the area of outsourcing. And I find, I love his quotes. I love his message. I, okay, I'm going to say, I love his message. I don't love his quotes. I think that his quotes and his style of writing is overcomplicated and confusing. Just my opinion. And I'm an engineer talking, so I've read a lot of confusing stuff in my life. But his message in his quotes is incredible. For example, the first one, you know, you won't believe what you can accomplish by attempting the impossible with the courage to repeatedly fail better. Failure, everyone, is our stepping stone, stepping, stepping stones to success. Everybody fails. There are no overnight successes. Everybody that you think is an overnight success has been through this huge effort and learning curve. Everybody has had to do things and commit to things and try things and fail and adjust and then succeed and then fail again. And you just get better and better at learning the lesson and doing the next thing and stepping up to success. The success everybody sees and thinks is a miraculous overnight success. The other thing that I love that he points out to us is that it's a whole lot easier to supersize your business than to just grow your business and do what everybody else is doing. And I'm not going to read the quote because like I said, they kind of give me a headache because it's in such a convoluted way, but I do 
wholeheartedly agree with him and know by the evidence of the people that I've been working with, it is much easier to build a $10 million business than a $100,000 business. And that is because there is so much less competition. So many fewer people believe they can build a $100 million business than believe they can build a hundred or a $10 million business than believe they can build a $1 million business than believe they can build a $100,000 business. Everybody and his brother is coaching people to make $10,000 a month or coaching people to make six figures. Now they're coaching. Now that they've stepped up a little and they're going, hey, I'll coach you to go from six to seven figures. I say to hell with that. Nobody just wants to make a million dollars. We are skipping the six figure and million dollar mark and going right to 10, 100, 10, 50, 100, whatever you want, because there is little to no competition in building a billion dollar business. Just saying. So the secret, here's my favorite thing about people not understanding or wondering what supersize your business means. The coolest thing about owning our own businesses is that we get to make up all the rules ourselves. We get to set the game up in our favor so that we win. So guess what? You get to decide what supersizing your business means to you. If it means $10 million, it means $10 million. If I am running a car wash and I set my goal as being a $10 million car wash, that is a supersized goal. If I set my goal, it, whatever it is, it's whatever it is to you, whatever it means to you. And maybe it's a million dollars, maybe it's a billion dollars, maybe it's you know a trillion dollars. I don't know, but you get to decide what that is because it's gonna be different for each of us. I used to think I wanted a billion dollar business. Actually, I just at first thought I wanted a million dollar business. Then I wanted a billion dollar business. Now as I'm getting older and I'm being the pajama grandma, I'm like, yeah, I don't need a billion dollars, but I could use several million or maybe several hundred million. And so that's what I'm going for. But it's different for each of us. But I started growing the business and I started getting over some of my false beliefs like I had to do it all myself. This is a lot like my plan looked like originally. And one of the problems that I ran into was with my partner. We had started the business originally with a make a little, sell a little philosophy because we didn't know much of anything about the food business and we had to learn everything. And at the time, that strategy made sense. But I will tell you that unless you're making Ferraris or Lamborghinis or something with a really big ticket item or really big price tag, Make a little, sell a little is not a good philosophy. It's definitely not a good strategy for a food business, even a top of the line, handmade, gourmet, super deluxe, amazing, no preservatives, Italian food products line. And this is why I like this Tim Ferriss quote. He says, don't follow a model that doesn't work. If the recipe sucks, it doesn't matter how good a cook you are. And that, that I wish I would have found it when I was working with my partner because that in a nutshell, pointed out the problem we were having. Now, I ended up buying out my partner and supersizing the business on my own because that was the only way to get out of that strategy. But if you have a strategy that sucks, it has to change. If you have a strategy like make a little, sell a little, it's gotta change, it's gotta go. That's a false belief and it doesn't match supersize. And whenever you have a conflict in beliefs, whichever one is stronger is gonna win. It's a lot easier to make a little, sell a little than it is to supersize your business. So in order to have a supersize your business win, I had to kill make a little, sell a little as a business strategy. I was complaining to my, one of my trusted advisors who happened to be my father at the time when I was struggling with supersizing the business. I had just bought out my partner and that meant more debt, more stress, more strain, more doing everything myself because I believe I had to do everything myself. And so I went out to my dad's business. He was at the time, he passed away about three years ago. Um, this is actually a picture of him. The last picture before he went into hospice. Um, I miss him every day. He was my, definitely my most wonderful, most trusted advisor. And my, I was his biggest fan and he always made me know that I could do anything. He taught my sisters and I from the time that we were really little that there's no such thing as can't. And then whenever I would be frustrated or 
upset about something, he would always remind me, there's no such thing as can't. You can't figure this out. You will know what to do. You will figure it out. You just have to keep trying and you have to keep doing different things and taking action until you get to the result that you want. And so we were chatting about that and about things that were going on with the business and things that I had tried that were not working. It was probably me complaining about the whole website thing because he was running a used restaurant equipment eBay business and he was like killing it. I mean, super successful top eBay seller killing it in this business. And, you know, he was in his late seventies when he started this business. So it was really cool to see somebody adopt technology and make it work for him. But he reminded me of the no such thing as can't because that came up in about every discussion we had at that time of my life. And then he said, Sherry, because he called me Sherry, what do I do? And I thought about it for a minute before I answered. Then I looked around and I thought, okay, well, what does he exactly do? What's he trying to tell me here? Well, what he was trying to tell me is that he empowers other people and delegates and gets other people to help in his businesses and do things. He doesn't try to do it all himself. Now, he used to do a lot himself. But as he got older, he had to do less and less things himself. And he had some health challenges that made it necessary that he couldn't do all the things he used to do himself. But he reminded me of this. And then he took his financial statements out of the drawer and started showing them to me. And I will tell you, I had financial statement envy in a very bad way because I couldn't believe the kind of money they were making in that industry. He had definitely figured out a way to supersize that business. And he was doing it in a way that wasn't harming him and causing him a ton of stress and strife because he was doing all the things I'm going to share with you today and the things that I began doing for my business. One of my favorite quotes, and if, you know, my dad reminded me of this that day. I love Tony Robbins. I've been following Tony Robbins since he was doing late night infomercials. And he is the king of reminding us to model, find somebody who's doing what you want to do and model that behavior. And so that's what I did. I got busy working smarter, not harder. I studied and researched and I opened my mind and asked myself, what else is possible? What else could work? What else could I model? What else could I create and do and fail better and try and put in place and act upon to supersize this business? Now, I'm sure I may have driven a lot of my employees and other people crazy, but that was the price that I had to pay for supersizing my business. I want to share the four steps of supersizing your business that I came upon or figured out or uncovered. I guess I don't want to say I invented them, but I did stumble upon them and make the process my own. The first one is what I call supersize. And you need to look at, and it's actually a formula because I mentioned I'm a nerdy engineer and so I like mathematics and formulas. But to me, to get to supersize is you have to take what you're really good at, your superpower, what you really want, your super desire, and the reason why you want it, your super why, and add those together. And by adding those together, they create, it's like the one plus one is greater than two, even though one plus one is two. But when you're a team and if you get synergy and all that, and I could be talking off the side of my mouth on this, but you do get the synergy. So superpower plus super desire plus super why is way more powerful than just the sum of those parts. Therefore, you get exponential growth and you supersize your business. But it all starts with understanding what you're good at and what you do. So for the Italian food business, for example, we are awesome at creating the world's best handmade Italian food. I mean, hands down, world's best white sauce, world's best ravioli, world's best red sauce. I think people argue with my red sauce, but it was pretty darn good. World's best garlic butter bread and all the other things that we made over the years. That was our superpower. Super desire. I wanted to supersize this business, number one, so I could pay off my partner. Number two, so I could pay off my dad, so I still hadn't paid him back. And number three, so that I could create the business that I wanted in the first place. You know, I still wanted to do what I want, when I want, with whoever I want, wherever I wanted, and I definitely wasn't living that yet. So that was step one. Step two, super service. 
I had to figure out who I was serving, what I was going to serve them, what I was going to offer them, and what was unique about what I had to offer people. And we were in a weird position, not weird, but, and there's a lot of businesses in this position, but we were unique in that all of our sales were business to business. All of my customers, all my direct customers were businesses, other businesses, grocery stores, uh, restaurants, um, and that was on purpose. Grocery stores, restaurants, convenience stores, um, some online sales, but virtually none. My dad kept trying to get me into that because he was doing so well on eBay and online. But the one thing about frozen food with no preservatives, the shipping for it costs way more than the products themselves, even our super deluxe amazing products. Um, but the second thing you have to really come to terms with and really figure out is who do you want to serve? Because so many people, so many business owners, and you don't have to raise your hand and, and say if this is you, but do you think your product's for everybody? Do you think everybody needs your product? Everybody should have your product. Most of us do. I thought everybody should eat Italian food until I did demos for a year. And then I got the rude awakening that a lot of people don't like ravioli. A lot of people won't even try ravioli. A lot of people, I was doing this in the, the boom. I, I only did store demos myself or on my own, not on my own, but I did some of them myself for a year. And then I disbanded that practice because it was so ridiculous for a business my size at the time. But uh, in store demos, I really found out what the consumers, the customers, the end customers, my customers, customers wanted. And in the food industry and in a lot of manufacturing things, it seems really predominantly in the food industry, you not only serve your customer, but you serve their customer as well with point of sale materials, promotional things, um, store demos, couponing samples, all kinds of things. Anyway, we were in that unique position that we had to actually make both parties happy. Uh, but I also think that that was a great position to be in because we did know what their customers wanted even more so than they did the, the grocery stores and the restaurants a lot of the time. So the second thing you have to decide is who am I going to sell to? And what am I going to offer them? Because who you're selling to determines what you offer them. If I was just selling to the stores, I probably only would have made ravioli. But since I also had to consider the wants and the desires of the, their customers, they wanted more than ravioli. They wanted garlic butter bread. They wanted red sauce. They wanted white sauce. They wanted cannelloni. They wanted manicotti. They wanted pizza. They wanted sausage. They wanted meatballs. They wanted giant meatballs. They wanted a whole slew of things. They wanted different flavors. They wanted a lot of things that we produced because we knew what they wanted and that they needed us to offer them more than just one product. Now we could have offered just one product and I'm sure supersized that, but I think that we got better customer loyalty and happier customers all the way around by offering more things that were in direct line with meeting the customer's needs and wants and desires. So that's step two. Step three is what I call SWOT and right up my alley as an engineer, as a quality manager and professional and whatever else my title happened to be, is something called SWOT, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And in corporate America, I did this for big companies and against big companies because what I would do is I would do this analysis for the company I work for, but I would also do it for our competitors and being I guess probably an overachiever I wouldn't just do it for like three or four competitors like most people do I would do it for like 20 kind of reminds me of back when I was in college and in high school we would have to get references because that was back before the internet so you'd have to go to the library member libraries and you'd have to research and you'd have to have references reference material that you got your information out of well we were always supposed to have like three and I'd always have 20 I just, I wanted to get more opinions than just a few whenever I was doing anything or making decisions. So strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. You need to do this or get this done for your business. You need to look at all these things for your business and then you need to look at it for your competitors. What are they doing? Because that tells you what to offer your customers. And it shows you opportunities in the market where you can identify your unique selling proposition, where you can stand out and meet your customer's needs better. And then step four is supersized strategies. 
You got to have a strategy that supports you and works for your business in order to supersize. You know, I said to make a little, sell a little didn't work. And it wasn't until we changed our strategy that we were able to actually supersize the business and grow at the level that we needed to. Sorry, I was sitting on my leg and it just totally fell asleep. <laughs> now I'm going to get that tingly thing and start screaming. Not really. So step four is supersizing strategies. You pick a strategy and then when you've got a strategy, there's a couple things you got to do for your business. Number one, if you don't have your processes documented, and this might be the quality manager in me or the you got to write down your goals message I got from my dad my entire life, but there's power in writing things down. Number one, if you write them down, you can look at them and you can find out where there's holes in your process or where mistakes can be made. And then that leads you automatically into the next step of optimizing those processes. You can see where you're doing things in a really roundabout waste of energy way. Now I will admit that I actually learned how to do time and motion studies in college because that was part of the curriculum. I personally think they're ridiculous and a waste of time, but I do think looking at your process and looking for unnecessary steps is very important. And finding ways to streamline and optimize your processes is super duper important. That leads to the next step of automation. You want to look at once your processes, you don't want to automate a process until you've got it running really smoothly. But once you do have it running smoothly, you want to look for ways to automate it or outsource it or delegate it or whatever. You want to find ways to make it faster, easier, more efficient, and more effective which is continuous improvement. You have to always be recycling back through this. This is actually a process map and it's a cycle. It's a circle where you go through these processes over and over again and you keep doing it. And you're always looking for ways to improve on the processes that you're using in your organization. That is step four. And of course the most complicated, but guess what? I'm gonna walk you through that step four for one company well, for one business, I guess they're a company, for one business in the next secret. So you can look forward to that. So you might be thinking, well, I don't understand how supersizing your business or supersizing my business will do any of these things, Sharon. How is it gonna increase profits? If it's big, How that doesn't necessarily mean it'll increase profits. How is it gonna increase sales? How is it gonna, obviously, if it's supersized, it's got higher sales than you've got now, right? Um, and any of these other things. So I wanna share with you some of the results that we got right off the bat uh, to illustrate these things so that you know I'm not just making this up. This is really works and can work for your business too. So how can it increase profits? And I'll tell you, as I was supersizing the business, you guys, I didn't know the results we were gonna get. I just believed that somehow bigger was better. And maybe it's because I came from giant corporate world and I worked for the biggest corporations in the on the planet actually. They are some of the biggest corporations on the planet were the companies that I worked for in my career. And maybe it's because I'd seen that and I knew it was possible that I just knew and believed that it was possible for me. So we increased profits. I actually bought out my partner in 14 months. We increased sales. We tripled sales for the business our first year. Um, it let me work less hours. Remember that first year I said I worked 12 to 14 hour days, seven days a week. A lot of that was because of those demos. I got down to one hour a day, four days a week. Monday through Thursday, I worked one hour a, one hour a day. And sometimes I would work um, a weekend to do special projects here and there or to get things ready for my accountant. But otherwise, one hour a day, four days a week. And that's what made it possible for me to be the primary caregiver for my granddaughter. Um, but it took about, it took about, I'm going to be on, it took three years. I'm going to say it took three years before I was down to the four days a week, one hour a day. Um, and that I attribute to being, you know, a, a very complicated brick and mortar business. Uh, it wasn't just a, a salon or a spa or something that you can do it a little bit more easily with because a lot of other people are doing the work in that particular business. That was just a false belief I had to get over, by the way. We increased productivity. We went from 12 full-time equivalent, and that's just a corporate measure of the number of hours versus the product that you put out. Um, we went from 12 full-time equivalent employees down to four. Now, 
we actually engineered and created a couple of pieces of equipment that allowed us to do that, but still maintain the handmade quality and the actually the handmade process of our system and process. But we actually um, engineered a couple of proprietary pieces of equipment that nobody else had and nobody else has that made it possible for us to really cut back on the amount of labor that was required to produce our products. We, I know we increased efficiency, but I will tell you, we didn't measure it. I never could figure out a great easy um, to calculate way of measuring efficiency for the business because it was a custom made to order um, set up and we made so many different things and every day was different. I couldn't come up with a way to measure efficiency that made sense. So we didn't really measure it. We did look at um, hours worked each week versus output in cases, but it was a really convoluted number because we had different quantities in our case sizes. So I, like I said, it wasn't a great looking number. I never made decisions based on any of that information. So we never really measured efficiency, but we have seen increased efficiency with many, many customers and clients that we've worked with. We reduced waste and I am probably most proud of this number of above all else. We got down to what I consider zero waste. It was less than one pound a day. I have never heard of another food company, a food manufacturing company that has less than a pound of waste a day. We saved time and money, tons of time and money um, that equates to hundreds of thousands of dollars the first year and each subsequent year as well. So this is just my first example of all of these things and the impact of supersizing your business. Now, if you're saying, this is another one of those checkpoints where if you're saying to yourself, you know, I don't believe it. I don't believe it's possible. Yeah, I've seen a couple of examples. Now you show me your example, but I don't think it's possible for me to outsource my business. You know, I just don't see at all how anything like this would ever be possible for my business. I'm gonna go on in the next couple of secrets to show you that. But if you really believe that and you're thinking that right now, I would say go ahead and sign off because I'm only gonna work with people that are open to grow and that get it. And trust me, I was there too at first. I didn't know how I was gonna do it, but I at least had a modicum of belief that it was possible. If you don't even think it's possible, then you know, don't waste your time listening because it's not gonna help you. And I am all about helping people. So if it can't help you, then I would say, look for somebody that you can resonate with, that you can relate to, and that you know can help you get to whatever your next level is. I do wanna share a couple of examples with you of different businesses that we have done this in, that we've helped to supersize, and just some of the different results that they've gotten. Do you perhaps have one of these type businesses? Is this the type business, am I gonna share an example of any of the type businesses you are in? And if I don't, by the end of the webinar, share what type business you're in, go ahead and leave me a comment in the comments and I will hook you up with a like business, if not the exact same business, but in a different area, so that you know that you can supersize your business too. So do you have a manufacturing business? One manufacturer was able to automate customer acquisition. They got a steady stream of new customers coming in and doubled their sales in four months. Now, it only took one customer to double their sales because of the nature of what they sold. They sold big ticket items and one industrial customer, they sold business to business. So getting one customer allowed them to double their sales. But who else wants to double their sales with one customer? I am raising my hand. We all would like to do that, right? Salons, this is really terrific in salons. A beauty salon owner optimized, automated, and outsourced her entire business in less than 127 days. And now she's thinking about franchising. And actually she is franchising her business. She's either gonna franchise or she's just gonna open different salons in different cities and different areas. That is supersizing your salon. Do you have a retail business? This happens to be a pet food store. The pet food store owner was able to increase sales 43% in four weeks and reduced absenteeism by 50%. One of her biggest challenges was she couldn't get people to show up for work. And we helped her with that and put an incentive and strategy in place that made it so that people came to work and they didn't quit and they showed up and they loved working there. Do you have a printing business? One printer improved their efficiency by reducing their turnaround time on orders to less than 72 hours and increased profits 153% in about five months. 
their original turnaround time was they had a three to four week lead time on their orders and they just weren't being competitive. And when they were able to look at their processes, taper it down and get it down to 72 hours, everything changed for them and the floodgates opened and they were really able to serve more customers, number one, serve customers better, number two, and and just be a lot more competitive. So they won a lot more jobs and it's an industry where you bid out a lot of jobs. They were getting a lot more jobs then than they ever had before. Now you know how to ethically steal the secrets to living the four hour work week and it's not even in an online business. I will say Tim Ferriss's book is predominantly about leaving your corporate job or leaving the traditional job market and starting your own business. And he did it with online businesses. And that was early on in the internet and it's super incredible business model and people are doing it more and more every day. People are, are doing that. And that's part of why I am personally as my personal supersize my business plan. I am pajama grandma working in my pajamas, supersizing my business so that I actually can achieve my dream and goal of working where I want, when I want with whomever I want in whatever I want to be wearing. So let's hop into secret number two, how to supersize your business without working yourself to death. Many business owners think, you know, I don't believe that this will work for my special unicorn, unique business or for me. I don't have time. I'm already maxed out. I'm doing too much. I'm wearing too many hats. We kind of talked about in the, la in the last secret. I see how it might work for some businesses since we've looked at about seven of them now, but not mine. I am so special and different, insert excuse here. I don't see how this will work for me. Well, let me share a story with you because I felt the same way. Remember, I supersized the business, got down to the four hour work week by about 2007. Well, in 2007, the husband looks around and he says, wow, you're not working very many hours. Maybe if you can do this with one business, we should run some more businesses. So by 2010, we were running too many businesses and I found out it was too many and I'll explain how in a minute, but we were running five or six different real estate businesses, which meant I was a broker, a realtor, and real estate investor, a landlord, a foreclosure negotiator, a loan modification specialist, you name it. it. It was, we had businesses in all those areas, in addition to a restaurant and bar and a couple of other businesses. It was crazy town in the Sharon's head. One of the businesses, we ended up getting involved with a really, really bad business partner. This is me putting it in a very Christian way. We got involved with a bad business partner, which led to lawsuits of the municipality we were in and legal issues and troubles and a whole lot of stress for me. Now, it was, I, I know now looking back that it was false beliefs that in, you know, helped to compound the stress you know, I believed that I had to do everything. I had to fix everything in this situation and all my other businesses. I had slipped back into the doing way too many things myself and not delegating enough of the things in all the businesses. Um, I, it was like the definition of insanity, doing the same thing every day, expecting different results. I was miserable, unhappy, running through my life, and it was causing problems not only in my professional life and in the business life, but also in my personal life. And... I just felt like the whole world was on my shoulders and it seems like every day the shit was just hitting the fan. And even when I thought that it couldn't get worse, it just got worse up to and leading to my sudden cardiac arrest. I left the city council meeting. It was on September 7th, 2010. I left the city council meeting. I remember it was hot. It was super stressful. We had actually won our lawsuit against the city and gotten our liquor license back. And it was just, people bitching and being negative and I just felt terrible. And I, so as soon as they were done with our part of the city council meeting, I ducked out, I waved everybody and I just left. And I was walking back to my business because it's only about two blocks away. And for some reason I decided I would cut through the bar and through the restaurant. And it's a good thing I did because about five or six steps into the door, I dropped over dead. I had a sudden cardiac arrest a little bit above my head. This is actually where I did die. Um, right above my head, you can't see it, but there's a doorway there to the men's room. And lucky for me, the bartender had gone to the bathroom at that time. And when he came out of the bathroom door, he almost stepped on me. 
Well, he realized I wasn't breathing, so he started doing mouth to mouth. He yelled for somebody at the bar to call 911. And that, you know, began this whole mess and this whole journey. Now, I probably don't sound super emotional as I'm talking about this because I was dead. I was actually gone and in a coma through all the drama that, that ensued after this, which there was a whole bunch of drama I found out after the fact, but I didn't, I wasn't there. I was just gone. And so the drama and the emotions and the trauma that my family had to suffer because of this, they're the ones that had to really go through and, and experience all of that. Um, cause I was being frozen and you know, that's another story too, but, uh, that's the process. And so when I actually woke up in the hospital, I, I had no idea where I was. And I, the first words out of my mouth were of course, what the fuck? Because that was my life at that time. It was a chaotic mess. And that was my primary question. I was asking myself, what the heck's going on? What the heck could be worse? What's going to happen today? And it just was in this downward spiral up to and leading to my actual death. Um, and I, I remember I couldn't understand why there were so many people in my room when right after this happened, right after this happened, and they um, woke me up from the coma. And um, I didn't get it. I didn't know what had happened. I didn't know why there were so many people around. But I came to find out later on that uh, statistically, it's very miraculous that I'm here talking to you today. Um, only 6% of people that have a sudden cardiac arrest are actually found and um, given help soon enough that they don't die. Um, the number one symptom of heart disease for women, I don't know if you know this, is actually death. And the number one symptom of a sudden cardiac arrest is actually death. Not a good symptom to have, right? I mean, you don't come back from dead usually very often. I happen to be fortunate enough to have done that. And then of that six or seven percent, only six or seven percent are actually resuscitated in time that they don't have um, severe organ or brain damage. And so I was super duper lucky and that lesson was not lost on me. I started a journey, well, kind of a forced journey for the next year of what the heck happened and what the heck am I gonna do about it and what am I gonna do to make sure I don't be dead because the statistics for people that don't last three to six years after a heart event are, are really, really grim as well. If you don't make massive lifestyle changes. And as I was hearing that, I heard, if you don't make massive lifestyle changes. So I knew I needed to make immediate and massive changes. And that's what I started to do. Um, it was a huge ego check for me, this whole experience. Because when I dropped dead and wasn't able to work or do anything for like a year, I was in cardiac rehab. And since I had a sudden cardiac arrest and they don't know what causes that, it's a lot like epileptic seizures. You, you don't get to drive. They took my driver's license away for six months. And although I begged at every doctor appointment, it was a, it's just an automatic no. I couldn't drive. And that lack of freedom is really hard for somebody who is as fiercely independent as I've been my entire life up until that point. Uh, and then the cardiac issues triggered eye problems. And I've had eye problems uh, pretty much my entire adult life. I can't see out of my left eye and I use a magnifying glass to see out of my right eye right now. And that triggered that. And so I needed to have eye surgery during that year too. So it was pretty much a year where I couldn't really do anything in the Italian food business. I stopped doing all of the real estate businesses because I think that they were part of the problem. I, the, the role I played in those businesses, although we helped a lot of people, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people, the part I had to play in that was soul sucking to me and my personality. It did not mesh with my personal values and I, it was very, very bad for me. It's like I, why I could never be a shrink or a psychologist or a psychiatrist or anything. I just couldn't do it because I take on and get affected by people and their circumstances. Um, but either way, it was an ego check for me because the business actually thrived without me. It did just perfectly fine without me. Um, I guess I, I learned that I wasn't as unique as I thought I was and that all the businesses did just fine without me, which was yet another ego check. You know, all of us feel like we have created it when we do businesses and create businesses, this living, breathing, 
thing. Well, because it is, it is a living, breathing thing. It is an entity in and of itself. But like parents, sometimes we have to step back and we have to know when we're micromanaging or when we're hovering and let our baby or let our child spread their wings, you know, run, fly, whatever it is. We don't prevent our kids from learning how to walk because we know they're going to fall down. We encourage them. And that's what we need to do with supersizing our businesses as well. And I discovered that actually I started reading and studying why businesses fail. And a lot of them actually died because of their owner. That was a rude awakening for me. Um, but what happened next? I knew that as I was making these lifestyle changes, I needed to make business changes too. I needed to help other business owners so that they didn't have to go through what I went through. Because you know what? Death isn't a lesson that most people are fortunate enough to come back from or come through. Most people aren't. And so if you work yourself to death, which is entirely possible if you're running a stressful business and trying to do too much yourself, you can very much work yourself into health challenges, health issues, cancers, strokes, heart attacks. Come to find out my dad actually had several heart attacks during his career and he didn't know it until he had open heart surgery and nobody else knew it because he worked right through them. Crazy, right? Crazy. Um, but I started to create and formalize my system and the process for supersizing my business. And then I started teaching it to other business owners so that they could do the same thing too. They were able to duplicate my success like way faster. I don't think it's taken anybody anywhere near three years to do what I did with the Italian food business, like get down to the four hour work week. Everybody has done it way faster. And I was a little jealous at first, but now I just get so excited by seeing people supersize their business. It is so exciting because I know that they are the ones that are changing the world and making the world a better place. It's up to us business owners and us entrepreneurs. And <clears throat> I don't wanna say anything mean, but I'm gonna, it ain't gonna happen from the big multinational corporations. They are not out to make the world a better place. Can argue with me on that if you want, but I think the evidence is pretty apparent. Hey, I want to share with you now, and I'm going to let you all vote in the comments box, which business you'd like me to share. Phil, and this is not Phil. This is actually one of my sisters and my beautiful granddaughter at the laundromat. Phil's laundromat, as a matter of fact. But Phil's laundromat, or do you want me to do Heather and Kathy's day spa? Those are the two businesses that were able to meet the deadline and sent their application or their questionnaire in to be considered to go through a supersize map and the process for how they can supersize their business on the call today. So do you guys want to hear about the laundromat or about the day spa? Go ahead and vote, put it in the comments, and then I will jump right in. I could actually do them both, but it would take too long, so let's pick one. Day spa, okay. The first thing we needed to do, and I needed to do, was I talked to both Phil and Heather and Kathy because Remember those first three steps of, of uh, secret number one? That's kind of like pre-work or the preliminary work that has to be done before we can really dive into implementing the strategy. And step four is really all about implementing the strategy that you decide to use to supersize your business. So I spent about a half an hour with both of them and came up with their background material, figured out who they are, who they serve, what their, their big plan is, and their big picture, because the implementation of the supersized strategy is all about getting you from where you are now to where it is you want to go. So Phil, for example, even though we're not doing him, I'll talk about his strategy because we already came up with something that he's doing immediately. And it's very different than what Heather and Kathy are doing for their business. Even though they're both business to consumer businesses, th their approach can be very different. Now Phil's approach, what we found for him is that he's had customers asking and asking and asking for dry cleaning. And he doesn't do dry cleaning. He's a coin-operated laundry. Of You know, he's got washers and dryers, and that's about it. But now what he's going to do is add another stream of income in the form of offering dry cleaning services for his customers. And it's really easy for him to do. He can outsource that entire thing. And so all he has to do is be like the middleman of picking up people's laundry, sending it out, and they'll come right to him to pick it up, and then collecting his money when people come to, to pick up their dry cleaning. So that is a really fast way for him to add another entire stream of income to his business without it being any more work for him. But 
let's talk about Kathy and Heather, what they want to do with their business. Well, the reason I really liked this one and this business and their business is because they're a lot like I was when I was getting started with the business. The, my partner and I, we weren't really making enough in the business to support both of our families. Now, Kathy and Heather both have husbands, and so their husbands are supporting the families and meeting the, the basic needs, but they want to get to the point where the spa is generating enough income and more to support their families in the way that they want to be supported, to live the lifestyle they want to live based on the income from the spa. So where they are right now is they're not making enough income to support the spa, support their families anywhere near, support their basic needs, much less the lifestyle they want to live. And then the lifestyle they want to live is about, I, I think about a million dollars would be sufficient to for them to meet their needs and the needs and the desires that they want, more than enough, right? It'd be more than enough for them to live the lifestyle that they want to live is what we agreed upon. Now, normally what you would do for your business is you would go through these next five steps for each process in your business, for each of the key functions of your business. But of course, we don't have time to do that on this webinar. So I'm going to pick one and I'm going to pick the one that's most important and most critical for Kathy and Heather to start out with, because that's what we do to supersize your business. We start with the most important area and strategy and we go through this process for that. Then we go back to the next most important and the next most important. And if you've got a team of people or a bigger organization, you can be doing these things simultaneously in different functions. Wherever you have people working in those different functions, you can do it simultaneously. But if you don't have employees or staff or outsourcing in each of those functions, say for example, finance and accounting, uh, manufacturing, um, purchasing and receiving. If you don't have people working in those areas, then you have to go to what's the most critical thing we do first and you do that first. So we're gonna do that with the thing that's most critical for them. And that is they need more customers. They don't have enough customers coming to their business. So that is their biggest number one priority and their biggest problem or challenge or opportunity. So that's what we're gonna do for them first. So the first thing we do is we identify and map out and document and write down what are they doing now? Well, what are they doing now? They are doing virtually just word of mouth advertising and they're just sharing and expecting when people to come in that they'll tell other people. It, it's hope marketing, right? They're not really doing anything with respect to that. They've run a couple of newspaper ads, but they don't have any idea if that's gotten any more people in or not. They did one mailer and they think maybe they got one customer from that, but they're not sure because they didn't run a coupon or anything to it. So. Step one, get more customers. They're not really doing much, so there's not much to write down. So what we did to optimize step two of this is we said, well, how are you gonna get more customers? What, since your process is really full of holes, what do we need to be doing to get you more customers? And so we decided we need to be doing some, we need to be getting customers to come to them really automatically if we can. And that's what we're gonna do in the next step, automate this process. But how do we do that? Well, number one way we can do it is the first thing we did is we had their teenage sons run around with fish bowls and get fi actual fish bowls and we got them to be able to put them in different restaurants where people can enter to win an, a free hour at the spa on any piece of equipment that they want. If the equipment's not being used, they can come in anytime and they can pick a piece of equipment and they can spend an hour on it. Now that gives Heather and Kathy the opportunity to upsell them to a membership, of course, a membership at the spa because they've got a great membership model. It's really, it's a, wow, it's a, it's a, I'm not telling you because it's a super awesome membership model idea and I've never seen anybody else do it. And so I would think that maybe down the road to really supersize their business way beyond the $1 million mark, we may want to uh, franchise or open up in different cities just like our salon friend is looking at doing um, because that would be a way to really do this because it's, it's an incredible model. I, I can see it in a, a bigger town just killing it. So, but first we need to optimize and decide how are they going to get more customers? So we did the fishbowl thing. The boys already did that. Now we're going to take that fishbowl idea and in addition to documenting out and optimizing how we do that, we are going to automate that by creating an online web capture or a lead capture page, which is just a little short two-page website or funnel that 
attracts people in. And we're using the same offer that they're using in the fish bowls. They are going to give whoever shares their name and email. They don't, I don't even have to know if we've decided name or not, but their email with the web page. If you share your email, you get a free hour and you can call and schedule this hour at the salon if you want to get or salon at the spa if you want to get or reserve a, per, a particular piece of equipment or you can just pop in and you can get your free hour on whatever piece of equipment you want. But by doing this, now Heather and Kathy have been able to capture the information and they can reconnect with these potential customers and really encourage them to come into the spa. Maybe they can encourage them to come in at off peak times or all kinds of things. It, it just really increases their flexibility and what they can do with this. Now, the next step of that is they could delegate this. They could have, um, right now they have the time to do it. So they're going to keep doing it themselves because they want to get really good at the selling process and they want to get really good at understanding the power of getting customers coming to them. So they're not going to delegate it, but they could down the road, delegate it to the receptionist. They could outsource it. You could outsource this whole thing and, and have it automated. But for right now, they're going to keep it in house. And then they're going to audit. They're going to see what's working, what's not working. If for some reason the free hour on a piece of equipment doesn't work, then they'll come up with some other idea, but they'll pay attention to. And to me, this is the most important step. You come up with an idea, you implement that idea, you see how it's working. If it's not working, you adjust and you try it again. You go through this process over and over again. It's the whole cycle of continuous improvement that you see written here. And as a quality guru person, I am a quality guru person, by the way, um, this is a, a no brainer. And this is what you need to do when you have dogs barking in the background. But this is the process that will go through over and over and over again to continuously improve the operation. So that is the five steps to supersizing your business. Once you get your strategy, that's how you actually implement the strategy that you decide you're going to do for your business. Some business owners might be thinking, and you might also think, and I am going to admit right here and right now that I believed almost all of these things when I was looking at building my business and supersizing my business. And I learned after my heart thing, because I didn't necessarily learn it before, that these are all false beliefs and they're that false beliefs are lies. Now, false beliefs are lies to me. They might be true to somebody else, but they're, they're a lie to me. Um, like if I say and believe I don't have the right connections to supersize my business, well, that wasn't true. I had all the connections I needed, obviously, because I supersized my business. So I didn't need any connections or right connections or to be in the good old boys network to supersize my business in a particular industry. But the real truth is the biggest obstacle to supersizing my business was me. And I've since learned and seen in dozens and dozens of different industries and different businesses that a business will only grow and supersize as quickly and as fast as the owner will allow it. Every time growth gets stalled, it's because the owner is either stalled or won't get out of the way and let it grow without them. That is a huge, huge ego alert, but it's totally overcomable, right? Not sure overcomable is a word, but it is now. So let's look at some more examples of businesses we've been able to supersize. Anybody here an author? We worked with one author and we helped her to write and launch her book in less than two weeks. She wrote it, got it to the publisher in less than two weeks. She's been working on it for five years. She's actually a speaker and an author, but she was never able to get it done. She could never get it done and get it fit in. So we showed her how to and how having this book done would help her supersize her business. So now she's not just a speaker. She is a speaker and an author. Car dealership. Does anybody here have a dealership? And not, it doesn't just have to be a car dealership, any kind of middleman business or dealership type business. Any business that sells things for other people, like you might be a windows distributor, you might be a door or garage door seller or distributor, but then there's the whole slew of dealerships like um, boats, motorhomes, car automobiles, four wheelers, uh, there's a whole bunch of things, um, ice, ice houses for ice fishing. There's all kinds of dealerships. 
Well, one dealership that we worked with, the car dealer owner was able to outsource 85% of his workload and finally spend time with his estranged wife and teenage children. He actually credits this with saving his marriage and keeping his youngest son out of juvenile jail. He asked to remain nameless. Um, anybody here a coach or consultant? We work with a ton of coaches and consultants. And I'm going to clarify here, not coaches and consultants that are just starting out and haven't decided they want to be a coach and consultant, but somebody that's been actually working at or been a coach and consultant for usually about a year or so or, or several months and just really wanting to grow and supersize it, but they're not sure how. This is one of my friends that's a consultant, and she went from zero to $11,597 in one month. Last month, she did over $25,000. This month, she is on track to do over $35,000. She'd been struggling over a year, and she was actually living on one of our friend's couches. The truth is, if you can talk, you can do this. You can do this process. If you can push a button, you can do this. We all are special and unique, and that's where our part in supersizing our business comes in. But the process... The science, the objective part of supersizing your business, it's 90% the same for every single business. It's only the 10% that's subjective and art that we need to bring to the table to make this happen. Supersized business does 90% of the heavy lifting for you. The process is the same. If you follow the process, you will succeed because you only have 10% of it that you can screw up and you can make a few mistakes on that 10% and you're still going to get there. Now you know how to supersize your business without working yourself to death. Let's hop into secret number three. Secret number three is how to make competition irrelevant even in the most competitive industries and businesses. I wanna share a couple of quotes here because I love quotes about competition because I am at the point in my life and career where I don't really believe in competition anymore. I believe in what this says. Beating the competition is easy. Beating yourself is a never-ending commitment. Stop being afraid of what could go wrong and start being excited about what could go right. These are just false belief things, right? Stuff's going to go wrong. I guarantee shit's going to happen and stuff is going to go wrong in your business and in your life because that is the nature of the universe that we live in. That is the nature of the world that we live in. If you expect and if you predefine, number one, we get to define what's right and wrong, but if you believe that everything is always going to go hunky-dory. If you're going to go from point A to point Z and not miss a single beat or step, you are delusional and kidding yourself because I don't think I know a single person that has had a perfect non-ruffled life in any way, shape, or form. Now, we all get to choose how we react to the things that happen in our life, but stuff's going to happen. We just need to have to know to, we just have to know how to deal with it. And if we're confident and we know that no matter what happens, we got this, we're going to deal with it and that we're going to come out on the other side of it better than we were when we went in, anything is possible. So some business owners might be saying, and I thought this at some times in my life and career, I don't know how to compete. There are new places popping up all the time in my industry. It seems like there's just a gazillion people in my industry all the time. I mean, try being a coach or consultant online right now where you target people that just want to make $100,000 a year or $10,000 a month. There is so much competition for right that right, that right now, it's, it's almost mind-boggling. Um, think of certain industries, and I'm going to share my actually favorite most competitive industry in a minute as me, the example for this. You might be thinking, I'm already in the most competitive industry. I will tell you, I have been in some of the most competitive cutthroat industries on the planet, and come out with a supersized business. And I know, that's how I know with certainty that you can too. So you might be thinking, you know, how can supersizing even help me with competition? Well, what if I say Coke? What if I say Apple? What if I say Facebook? Does that give you an idea of how supersizing your business can help you deal with the competition? That was an eye opener for me. I want to tell you a tale of two bars, I call this. And really, it's a tale of two restaurants and bars. But I think we can agree that restaurants and bars are one of the most competitive industries on the planet. There's a billion, in, there's a billion restaurants and bars 
I think it's in the world. There's a billion. Now, by comparison, there's only a little over 8 billion people on the planet. That means that there is a restaurant or bar for every eight human beings on this planet. That is one competitive industry. Would you agree? If you disagree, go ahead and put it in the comments box because I want to know who doesn't think the bar and restaurant industry is super competitive. It has got one of the highest failure rates of any type of business. So let me tell you a story about a bar and restaurant that was able to supersize in spite of immense competition. Bar number one, I've been associated with for a really long time. They had pretty much a monopoly or, you know, there were lots of other restaurants and bars in town in their area, but they pretty much were the big dog. They had the monopoly for about five years and the owner got a little complacent and liked just doing kind of not the minimum to get by, but just was loving this ride all the way to the bank and <clears throat> enter bar number two bar number two bought an existing business in his area renovated it did an incredibly awesome renovation and started to compete on a really high scale level with bar number one bar number one had been sitting back on his laurels just kind of rolling with the flow not doing anything super special to grow his business because he pretty much had the market cornered in the area and when bar number two came in, they started attracting a lot of bar number one's customers. Bar number one owner started freaking out, not knowing what to do. He started doing things that were stupid for his business and ended up alienating people even more. And we were talking one day and he said, oh my God, I don't know what to do. I'm having chest pains. I'm getting sick all the time. I, I'm, I'm freaking out here. I don't know what to do. And I said, well, you know, I might be able to help you with this. I know a little bit about this. I've been helping businesses do this. Why don't we, you know, sit down and, and figure it out and talk about it? So we did that. And we did a whole bunch of really fun experimental things with him since it's a business I've been associated with a long time. I was able to, to push the envelope and try some more fun things that I wouldn't have done with other businesses at that time. Um, and I did do some of them. And I have definitely incorporated a lot of those things since. But we got to do really cool things that I wouldn't have necessarily done. And it's a good thing we did that because number one, he started to get customers back and he was really, really happy and was able to supersize his business. Number two, seven new places opened in the next nine months in the area. And I guarantee had we not done this, had we not done this work to supersize his business and get his strategy and his structure and his systems in place, he would definitely have either had a major health issue or quit business. He would have just gone belly up and quit business. When I started talking to him, he was already thinking about trying to sell the business. Now, he wasn't in a good position to sell the business then because he had gone from big dog to not so big dog in a very short period of time. Um, but we did learn, and I asked him to send me a list of the things that he had as the biggest takeaways, and I want to share those with you. Um, one of the things that he realized was that he didn't, he thought he wanted everybody back, all the customers. And so one of those cool things we did is we spent some Friday and Saturday nights at his place watching what was going on and what was happening because he had actually kind of become an absentee owner and wasn't really paying attention to his business, which was a problem for him internally because his employees hated it and his customers in turn then hated it, which made it really easy for them to jump ship when the new place came to town. And he had to win back those customers and win back his employees. And part of what he learned was that he didn't want everybody to come back because when we were sitting down there on Friday and Saturday nights, we learned that testosterone, alcohol, and 21 year old young men don't necessarily make a great combination. Uh, we saw the urinal get ripped off the wall. We saw people throw up in the bathrooms. We saw people damage things. One guy went by and broke the front window. There were fights. It was just a free for all. And one thing that we made sure we put in place that he really appreciated was that when we attracted people back to his business, we didn't attract everybody. We only attracted the type of customers and clientele that he wanted to have in his business, which totally positively impacted his employee morale, his bottom line dollars and everything. Everything was better because he didn't have everybody coming to his business anymore. He learned about the lifetime value of a customer and the impact that had on his business and why it was important to build relationships with customers 
and value them and pay attention to them and communicate with them. Um, I taught him about what the 1000 True Fans, which is an article by Kevin Kelly from 2008. I didn't find out about it until a few years ago. Uh, well, actually, it's more than a few years ago now. Boy, time flies. But I didn't find out about it till after my sudden cardiac arrest in 2010. So um, what the premise of that is, is that any business, any artist, any profession only really needs a thousand true fans to be successful and create what they want. Um, and then he learned about the three ways to make money, new customers, repeat customers, and in customers increasing the amount that they spend when they come to your business. Um, people support businesses that they know, like, and trust. Again, this was the list of things that he learned as takeaways from our working together. I appreciated the list. I told him I wouldn't tell you who he was if, I, if he gave me the list. Um, and that leads to something I call invisible value creation. And it came about from, um, I love Tony Robbins. I think I said I love Tony Robbins. And he says, setting goals is the first step to turn the invisible into the visible. And then... Companies that solely focus on competition will ultimately die. Those that focus on value creation will thrive. So if I set goals to supersize my business, I am invisibly creating more value for the people I want to get to know, like, and trust me. And I call that invisible value creation. So you might be thinking, you know, I don't know how to do any of this stuff that we just went over in this secret, Sharon. I don't really know how to outsource, negotiate. I, don't, I mean, I barely know how to negotiate with my vendors. I don't know how to create rules that work for me in my life. I don't know how to do any of this. Well, the good news is you don't have to. We've got you covered because it's all part of the process. It's all built in. So number secret number three, the truth. When you serve customers better, when you focus on what you can do for them that they want the most, they become lifelong loyal, delighted supporters of your business, and they insulate you from anything that happens in the world, including competition. And not just competition. They help to protect you against haters and critics. They help to protect you against changes in your area or municipality or in government regulations and things. People that know, like, and trust you will support you against any adversity that you come up against in the world. You become unstoppable. You are actually your only competitor. If you are always besting your own best performance, you have nothing to worry about. Henry Ford said it a long, long time ago. And all we have to do is look around to know that this is true. The competitor to be feared is the one who never bothers about you at all, but goes on making his own business better all the time. And if you are that competitor, you are unstoppable. Let's look at a couple of more businesses. Nail salon. This is actually my nail salon. And I picked this picture because I want to get my nails done like that. I think they're gorgeous. Um, my nail salon added a recurring product that three times their sales in 90 days. They actually had to open another location by adding a recurring product. The strategy was to add a recurring product to their business, a membership site versus just having people come in or make appointments. A restaurant, a restaurant owner automated their customer handling and increased their profits 48% in 60 days. This is an antique store, an antique retailer, one of my favorite all-time customers. Um, this antique boutique reduced their inventory by 63% and their overhead by 27% in six months because they had to get rid of 63% of the shit in their place because it was so bad it was never going to sell. And by reducing that inventory, it reduced their overhead. They reduced it and replaced it with some stuff that would sell. And it was just a matter. Their strategy had to be better buying decisions, which for the owner was really tough. But once they embraced that strategy and philosophy, everything changed. A manufacturer, another food manufacturer was able to reduce their waste by 39% in just over two months, 67 days. If you can reduce food waste in, or if you can reduce waste in a food related company, it's huge. Now you know how to make competition irrelevant, your business unstoppable, even in the most competitive industries and businesses. I love the people that complain that Walmart moves into their area and they, they just fold up shop and go out of business because they think they can't compete. Everybody and anyone compete can compete with anyone, including the Walmarts of the world.
Everybody doesn't want to shop at Walmart. So let's talk about what we've covered so far. Secret number one, how to ethically steal the secrets to living the four hour work week. And it's not with an online business, but it can be. Secret number two, how to supersize your business without working yourself to death like I tried to do. And secret number three, how to make competition irrelevant even in the most competitive industries and businesses. Let me ask you a question. Let's take a deep breath here because I need to drink a coffee. And I wanna know, are you enjoying what we've talked about so far? Do you see how it's possible for you to supersize your business no matter what business or what industry you're in? So who wants to take it to the next level? Who wants to know? Of course, we're on a webinar, so I've created a special offer for you to help you supersize your business. Who wants me to share what I've created? If you do, go ahead and put in the Q&A box. I'm ready. Show me. I want to know. Something to that effect. Yes. Anything like that. Now I can have a little drink of water. Well, we fill in the box, or a couple people do. I only need a couple of you to tell me that you want to see it for me to share it. If you don't, I'm going to say... Thank you for joining me, you guys. You can always go over to my um, Supersize Your Business private group and you can ask to join. You'll have to answer a couple of questions. You can ask to join. And I've actually got the Supersize Your Business process sort of outlined there as a scavenger hunt. If you go through the scavenger hunt, you can get some of this information. Now, it's of course not anywhere near what I'm going to offer here, but if you're in a position that you, you just know that you can't do anything because you're dying in your one person show Then I would recommend that that's the place you go start. I am getting a lot of, yeah, show us already. What the hell, Sharon? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Tony. So a couple options here. I wanted to put an application form right off the bat because if you're looking at what I've talked about so far and you're saying there is no way I can do this myself, I just can't, I don't have it in me and you want us to help you with it, go ahead and go to this site and fill out the application. I will tell you it is significantly more expensive than what I'm going to share on this webinar going forward, but it is an option. I just want you to know it's always available. Well, it might not always be available. It's available right now. It might not always be available. I'm going to totally take that back. I didn't mean to say that because it won't. Part of why I'm doing this is I want to not do that as often and to be able to serve more people I want to offer what I'm offering today but you can go there and apply I also decided at the last minute that I might I'm going to talk about that in the bonuses so you have to wait to the end if you want to hear that but this will be another place where you can go apply for one of the bonus things that I'm going to offer at the end I just decided and added the slide right before I started talking introducing Supersized Business Secrets Masterclass. Woohoo! Okay, I'm happy. I'm super excited, you guys. I'm really excited to share this. I've never shared this before. I've, I've walked businesses through it one-on-one, -on -one, but I've never had it in a class format where I can take a group of people through it. I've taken a group of people, like small groups of people through it, but I've never taken, like I want to produce here. I want to produce and make it available to a bigger group of people so that more people can actually supersize their business and we can change the world. The more people that we've got building supersized businesses, the more people that can change the world. So here's what you're gonna get. Everything you need to supersize your business without working yourself to death. And I mean that. This is just a quick brainstorm list of some of the things that are included and some of the things that we do in the masterclass and that I've coached and done for other businesses. But we're gonna break it down into, and I planned on a six week Masterclass, but I'm thinking the more I think about it, I can't do it. We're going to have to probably do at least, or do eight weeks. I'm not going to say at least. We're going to break it down so that it's in manageable size pieces, but it might have to be eight weeks unless we pre-work and do the whole preliminary stuff as a, a pre-work to the actual masterclass. And that would be the whole supersize plan part. The first three steps would have to be done prior to the masterclass. Then we would jump in and we would do the rest of the process, the process of identifying and mapping out your unique strategy, um, defining your processes, optimizing them, automating them, delegating, outsourcing, writing job descriptions if we need to write them, doing whatever we need to do to make sure things are implemented properly, um, talking about how to make sure that we're being profitable. A lot of times people will get an idea 
that they want to do a strategy and, and that will supersize their business. And they come to find out that that strategy isn't profitable. I see that with all online businesses all the time. They decide that they're going to advertise and spend massive quantities on advertising to supersize their business. And what they come to find out when they're, if they're not paying attention in the beginning is that they are actually not profitable. Yeah, they're running a lot of money through their business, but they're not making a profit. And none of us want to be in business to not make a profit. Then we'll do a section and a big part, my favorite, of course, is continuous and never ending improvement to lead to your supersized business. So everything you need is included in this masterclass. It's all about helping you to supersize your business. And I've actually seen results in as little as 45 minutes with people as soon as they've implemented stuff from the first lesson that I've taught them. And this next part, I'm going to offer as a bonus, a, a live event for 10 people. I'm thinking I'm going to keep it at 10 because I want to keep it a small intimate group so we can do a lot of one-on-one -on -one in it. But if you attend one of my live events, I've had two groups go through this live event before. Within two days of leaving the event, people are seeing massive and reporting massive results. They're getting things done that they never thought they could get done in, in such a short amount of time that they think it's almost miraculous. And they're doing it without working themselves to death and without wasting time on shit that doesn't work. Because none of us have time to waste time on shit that doesn't work. Here's another example. A liquor store owner realized that figured out we helped her to be able to run her entire business with just two employees. And by outsourcing her accounting and payroll and tax handling, it saved her 10 hours a week, which she was then able to spend time with her granddaughters at the cabin that she bought with the increased profits that she's been experiencing since working with us. She's up 22% this year. And we're only halfway into the year. So who is this for again? This is for anybody that's got an existing business and wants to grow and supersize and not just supersize, but have a profitable business. Uh, one of the things I pride myself in doing is teaching you how to automate your profiting, your profitability, how to get profits on autopilot for your business. My underlying goal is to make sure that every business that I work with learns how to get profits on autopilot for their business. So if you're in any of these businesses, again, if I haven't shared an example of your type business, or if it's not listed here because I just brainstormed this list, go ahead, put it in the comments below, and I will make sure that I hook you up with somebody or with a testimony for sure or a case study of somebody in either exactly the same or a very, very similar business to yours. Remember this from the beginning, the warning that I was going to have a surprise at the end? I've decided to make this next thing that very thing because I've found that the number one reason don't get people don't get started or don't try to supersize their business is because they don't think they have enough time. So the bonus that you get for staying to the end is I'm going to show you and any of you how to free up 10 hours from your schedule or your time, how to get 10 hours out of your busy lifestyle right now. This works for anybody. And if you stay to the end, you'll get the link to this training and you'll learn exactly how to free up 10 hours of your time. And 10 hours a week is more than enough to supersize your business and implement everything that you'll learn. Time and money saved. This is one of the biggest reasons to check this out. You don't have to spend the years of trial and error that I've spent. You don't have to have the biggest thing is like the doubt, fear, worry, and stress of figuring it out yourself. You don't have to spend the, actually I spent at least seven and a half years perfecting this and learning about it and studying and researching and reading books and trialing and erroring on other people's companies and businesses. You don't have to take and have the steep learning curve that I had to go through. I've actually spent tens of thousands of dollars on expert coaching and advice to help me get better and better at doing this for your business and other people's businesses. So what are you going to get? Super Size Business Masterclass, a $24,997 value. So what else do you need to supersize your business? How about all the tools and resources that you need to automate, optimize, outsource, and supersize your operation? Plus, a personalized supersize your business strategic map. Here's just some of the tools that we use to determine and to put, have you use and put to work in your business. 
Some of them work better for other type businesses and different industries. This is just a quick brainstorm list. Can you tell quality managers love to brainstorm? It's one of our favorite tools, brainstorming. But I just brainstormed this list. I've actually got a resource guide of hundreds and hundreds and even thousands of resources that you can call upon to use to help you map out the strategy for your business. So with this tool, with the map and the toolbox, I like to call it a toolbox, you'll be able to define, optimize, automate, and continuously improve all of your business functions. Not just the one thing that you think that you do, but all the functions that you need to have in place to supersize your business. Because supersizing a one-man shop or a one-woman show is very different than supersizing and at the supersize stage, your one woman or one man shop needs to turn into a multi-person or a multi-functional organization. Um, you'll be able to map out and have a clear path to supersizing your business. You will know exactly how you're going to go from point A, where you are right now, to Z, the top of the mountain where you want to be with your supersized business. Now, will there be bumps in the steps? Of course there will but we'll have a plan for that. You'll know what to do when you hit a hiccup. You'll know how to automate all of your customer handling. And like I said, my goal is to make sure that you know how to create profits on autopilot for your particular business and industry. You'll understand your business's results and performance. You'll know all about key performance indicators, which is another corporate carryover thing that I brought with me. You'll have tracking forms and systems in place so that you can know at a glance if you need to make an adjustment in what you're doing, you'll always know what to do and what your next move is. You'll also be able to get rid of a whole bunch of stuff like working all the time, unnecessary expenses and service providers, tasks below your pay grade. This was a huge one for me. It's the whole working in your business instead of on your business thing. There were a lot of times when I would actually put on an apron and cook in my Italian food business because somebody didn't show up. There, I mean, that was crazy town. I mean, going from my corporate job to cooking ravioli, that was just plain, as I look back now, it was just plain stupidity and insanity. But at the time, I thought that's what I had to do. And a lot of times as business owners, we do whatever it takes. And you have to have that mentality, but you also have to have the mentality where I'm going to put in place whatever it takes, not I'm going to personally do whatever it takes. You can get rid of sleepless nights and stress-filled days, health challenges, running through your life, lack of free time, and much, much more, of course. Here is Tina from Racine's story. She says, I was just going through the motions, putting out fires every day. Sharon helped turn my business into a proactive rather than reactive endeavor. Now I feel so much more confident and sure of what I am doing. We have mapped out step-by-step -step process for supersized growth and profitability to follow. No more guessing or stressing. You might be thinking, I can't afford to do this right now. I get that. I thought that too, which is part of why sometimes I would make the choice to work in my business instead of on my business. Remember early on, I owed my dad. I was trying to buy out my partner. I was, you know, trying to make sure the business would remain and, and continue to grow and be profitable. Um, but I, I also knew that I had to do something. I couldn't keep going on and doing what I was doing. I couldn't keep limping on. It wasn't going to work. I had to do something. And had there been something like this, I would have known that no matter what it took, I was going to have to figure out how to do it because it would have been my best, fastest, quickest way to my solution, which was supersizing my business. Fortunately, I didn't have that option back when I was doing it. I had to figure it out. But, you know, how much longer can you keep going on like you're going? And then my, my biggest question for you, and I hate to even ask it, is... What will happen if you burn out? What will happen to your business if you get sick? What will happen if somebody in your family gets sick? What will you do? So what are you going to get? The Super Size, master, the super size Business Masterclass, $24,997 value. Super Size Tools, Resources, Map, a nine, you know, your personalized map, a $9,997 value. It's a total value of $34,994. Well, what else do you need? What else do you need to supersize your business as quickly and easily as possible? Well, how about supersize secret studies? All of the tests and studies that I've done 
over the last couple of decades that helped me to know how to strategically grow and supersize my business and all the other businesses I've worked with. How about some of their actual case studies and the insider secrets in various industries? Because I'm going to tell you right now, we like to think that there aren't old boy networks and insider secrets in industries, but there totally are. There's totally insider secrets in absolutely every industry. And the only way you're going to find out about them, other business owners aren't going to tell you them because they're their competitive advantage. But you can find out about them in supersized secret studies. Examples of how business owners have supersized their business, how they've used each of the different steps in this process to supersize their business, and how you can too. Supersized studies cost me a lot to bring them to you, of course, through experience and health challenges. I mean, I actually had to drop dead to figure out and create a system out of this. Um, 45 years of studying my own businesses and calculating and learning and college educations and trainings and seminars and books and research and you name it so that you don't have to. Um, you might be thinking that you can't do this because you don't have time. And this again is, the, to me, time is the great equalizer. We all have 24 hours in a day. It's all a matter of priorities. And what am I gonna set as my priority? What's most important to me? Is supersizing your business and changing the world important to you? Is it a priority? Is it a must? If it is, then you're going to allocate some of your rarest resource time to doing it. If it isn't, you won't. Now, my secret is you don't have to do this yourself. You can get somebody in your organization to do this for you. Now, you're going to have to give your input because you're the business owner, but there's a big difference between giving your input and actually physically doing this yourself for your organization. This is actually something that you can delegate, right, as you supersize your business. The learning of how to do this and incorporate it and make it a part of your organization, you can totally delegate this. You have to be involved in the process, but you can delegate it, right? Because we'll train your person for you. So what are you going to get? Supersized Business Masterclass, a $24,997 value. Supersized Tools, a $9,997 value. And Supersized Secret Studies, a $2,797 value. It's a total value of $37,791. What else do you need? What else would help you know that you got to do this for your business now. How about supersized swipes? What the heck are supersized swipes, you might be thinking? Well, here's just a partial list again of what I call supersized swipes. These are my decades worth of swipe files and success studies, emails, bot scripts. Do you know what bots are? Bots are automated Facebook Messenger scripts, and you can use them to improve quality, customer service, build relationships and communication with your customers, build know, like, and trust, customer service secrets, social media influencer secrets, how to make your tribe your family, copywriting secrets, templates, um, everything that we've used to build our business and other businesses along the way, you get and can customize for your unique business. But they're done. They're already done. All you have to do is plug in the name of your company and a couple of other things that you want and they're done for you. You might be thinking, you know, like I just said, that you don't want to do this. Guess what? You don't have to. You can actually have somebody in your organization do it for you. So what are you going to get? Supersized Business Masterclass, $24,997 value. Supersized Tools, $9,997 value. Supersized Secret Studies, $2,797 value. Supersized Swipes, $2,597 value. It's a total value of $40,388. What else do you need? What do you need to know to be able to get started and supersize your business? What do you need to start supersizing your business now? How about supersize secret systems? These are systems that I've created and put in place to automate and do different things for different types of companies so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel, basically. Ways to automate, automation secrets. Ways to supersize and the different secrets from all the different business functions. One of the coolest things about my career in corporate America is, and my favorite thing about it was, as a quality director or vice president or manager or whatever my role was, I reported usually directly to the president or CEO. And I got to stick my nose in, my rather large nose, in 
everybody's business. It was my job to make sure that everybody was doing everything in their department and in the organization as a whole as efficiently, effectively, and cheaply and easily as possible. So I knew all the secrets of every function and everybody in every function. Like I said, I worked for some of the biggest companies, it, multi, you know, international companies, worldwide, global companies in the world. And I got to poke my nose in all of their business. So that is something that you probably can't get anywhere else. Customer handling automated system, social media advertising secrets, influencer marketing, relationship marketing, continuous improvement, SWOT analysis, and so much more. Took me 14 years of research and development and a year and a half of trial and error to perfect some of these systems. And I used, I did the trial and error on other people's businesses. So that's kind of terrific for you, right? I spent tens of thousands of dollars to help you be able to do these things and put these systems in place. Some of them with the push of a button in your business. Some will take a little bit more thought than the push of a button, but some of them literally the push of a button and it's in your business and you can start using it. Supersized business secret systems, you might be thinking, well, you know, I've tried and purchased some trainings and programs and guru consultant products before and they didn't do squat for me. I will say I've been with you. I told you about the website, right? Well, the ex-husband and I got involved and had a lot of real estate businesses. So we always had a real estate coach. And our first real estate coaching firm, actually it was our second real estate coaching firm. The second real estate coaching firm that we went with, um, it turns out we were having results that were amazing them. And we came to find out that they weren't actually doing what they taught us. They were just teaching us theory and we were actually applying the theory. So we were their guinea pigs and we were paying them high five figures, over $50,000 a year for the honor of being their guinea pigs and building their business and their case studies and stories so that they could sell their fifty dollars and $75,000 coaching program to other people. That is an example of getting burned on a guru. Now, we did learn things and we did, because we had made that investment, we did do things and act upon things and try things that we never probably would have done had we not made that investment up front. But we weren't particularly happy about learning that they weren't doing. We, we then went with different coaches that were actually doing what we were doing and we had a lot more success, but it was a lesson learned. We guarantee to show you how to supersize your business or you get your money back. No questions asked. We're not satisfied until you are. We are not. I have done this for hundreds of businesses and with hundreds of businesses. Actually with, I've never done it for them. I always have to do it with them because it's your business, it's not mine. I have done it for 17 of my own businesses, but hundreds of others. So what are you gonna get? Supersized Business Masterclass, $24,997 value. Supersized Tools, a $9,997 value. Supersized Secret Studies, a $2,797 value. Supersized Swipes, a $2,597 value. And Supersized Secret Systems, a $1,997 value. I'm gonna tell you, you guys, those last three things are worth way more than the value that I placed on them. But I didn't want you to think that this was so out of the ballpark that it wasn't even reality. I've literally spent hundreds and thousands of dollars and decades of my life creating this and being able to put this together for you and for you to be able to supersize your business. It's a total value of $42,385. Now let me ask you, if all this did, now I'm obviously not gonna charge you $42,385, right? But I will tell you, I charge my corporate clients way more than that, like way, way more than that, and they happily pay it. But if I did charge you $42,385, and all this did was show you exactly how to supersize your business, would it be worth it to you? If all this did was increase your business's profits so that you could quit stressing all the time and get a good night's sleep, you know, more than once a year, would it be worth it to you? 
if all this did was let you cut back to a 40 hour or less work week like a normal person, would it be worth it to you? If all this did was reduce your expenses twice as much as the price so it pays for itself, would it be worth it to you? If all this did was give you back your life and your family again, would it be worth it to you? Was to our car dealership. If all this did was reconnect you with the reason that you started your business in the first place, would it be worth it to you? How about if it freed you from being a slave working in your business to the owner working on your business? Would it be worth it to you? If all this did was allow you to hire or outsource the two key people you need most to supersize your results without costing your business any more money, would it be worth it to you? Because we show you how to do that in this training. So what are you going to get? Supersize Business Masterclass, $24,997 value. Supersize Tools, $9,997 value. Supersize Secret Studies, a $2,797 value. Supersize Swipes, a $2,597 value. And Supersize Secret Systems, a $1,997 value. It's a total value of $42,385. Now, I had two choices when I was putting this together. My first option, I was, could, could go as cheap as possible and try to sell as many as possible. But there really wasn't any incentive in that for me to really stack on the value. So the second option requires a little bit higher investment on your part. But in exchange, I can devote more resources to guarantee your success. Things like the three added things besides just the course and the personalized map, right? What would it be worth to you if you're able to make your world a better place? What would that be worth to you? How about if you could supersize your business? What would that be worth to you? Supersize secrets, $42,385 value. My corporate clients pay between $80,000 and $250,000 for me to come in and do it with their management teams. And I get $25,000. That's the price on my website. That's my regular beginning price to do this with your company or your business. But I'm going to give you a super duper special discount today. And I'm doing it for a couple of reasons. I've alluded to it and I've actually said it right out a couple of times. Number one, I want to transition from the one-on-one -on -one coaching business model and working with businesses one-on-one. -on -one. And even though they're super lucrative, they require a lot of my time and energy. And I still have my dream of doing what I want, when I want, where I want, and with whom I want. Um, and this is, I've mentioned also, the inaugural group. This is the first time I will have done this as a master class on the computer, online. And so I've done it in person, but I haven't done it online. So I want a group of you to go through it with me to give me feedback so I can continue to perfect and optimize, because I'm all about optimizing everything, on a, a continuous basis. So from week to week, you will we'll go through the information, you'll ask questions, I'll answer the questions, and I'll optimize to make sure I'm creating the best possible online product. Because the next group of people that go through this will pay more money, but they will not have me live. They will not be going through it live. They will not get their direct question and businesses dealt with as part of the process. They'll just have to learn from the first group that goes through. So I'm offering a really, really deep discount. You can get started today by going to supersizebusiness.com slash go for just $4,997. So what are you going to get? Supersize Business Masterclass, $24,997 value. Supersize Tools, a $9,997 value. Supersize Secret Studies, a $2,797 value. Supersize Swipes, a $2,597 value. Supersize Secret Systems, a $1,997 value. And all four, by going to supersizebusiness.com slash go, a one-time payment of $4,997. Again, that's a $42,385 value. And it's really worth much, much more than that. But I want to get as many of you in and doing this with this first group as I, I can. And I want to help as many of you to supersize your business as possible. And that's why we're offering the discount. So now you've got two choices. Your first option is to do nothing. You don't have to take the leap of faith which is 100% risk-free, by the way. That's your first option. But, you know, 
if you don't if you don't change anything, what what's going to change in your business? Business probably nothing, right? Or you have the second option: you can pony up this small investment today compared to all the value that you'll get in return, and just give it a shot. If I can't make you money, then I don't deserve yours, and I don't want yours. I already told you that we guarantee to supersize your business. Here's our supersize guarantee. Sign up today. If you don't like it for any reason, I don't care if it is 29 days, 23 hours, and 59 minutes from now. Just let me know, and we'll give you your money back. The real question is, is it worth gambling a few minutes of your time to check this out? which if it does, even half of what I claim today on this training will pay for itself as soon as you apply the very first lesson in supersized business secrets. So what are you gonna get? Supersized business masterclass, a $24,997 value. Supersized tools, a $9,997 value. Supersized secret studies, a $2,797 value. Supersize swipes at $2,597 value. Supersize secret systems, a $1,997 value. It's a total value of $42,385 for $4,997 today. As if this weren't already amazing enough, for the first 10 fast action takers, and I talked about this earlier, I am doing a live workshop. And it's not really a workshop because it's going to be between one and three days. I'm going to take you by the hand and walk you through this entire process step by step for your business with you as a group of 10 for your business. And I kept it at 10 because I've done it with groups of five before and that was fine. But I think, you know, 10 doubling it is, is about all that we want to take through it at one time to make sure that you get all your needs met. The reason it's one to three days is what we're going to do is that when we determine who the 10 businesses are and the 10 people, we'll figure out when, where it's going to be, how long it's going to be. And we'll, uh, we'll together determine all the details of that. This fast action bonus is for 10 people only, the first 10 only. It's actually 40 years in the making. The real value of this is $14,997. Each of the people that have gone through this with me before have paid $25,000. So this is an incredible opportunity. I don't know if y'all know it. And I kind of think I might be crazy for doing it and offering it. But like I said, I want to make sure that this online class is the best opportunity and the best business building, supersizing, growth, growing your business to whatever level you want on the planet. Not just online, on the planet. I want to make sure it's the best. And you all, you first 10 are going to help to ensure that that happens. Um, A lot of people will will think that they can't do this because they are a you know they're they're already too busy they don't have the time they can't get away to do a workshop and again just like that if you can't afford it I got to ask you if you're a one person shop and everything's dependent on you I think that you probably already know that you absolutely positively have to do this and you have to be one of the first ten because you need to have me take you by the hand and walk you through it so what are you gonna get? Supersize Business Masterclass, $24,997 value. Supersize Tools, a $9,997 value. Supersize Secret Studies, $2,797 value. Supersize Swipes, $2,597 value. Supersize Secret System, $1,997 value. That is a $42,385 value. Plus, if you're one of the first 10, $14,997 value. All for $4,997 at supersizedbusiness.com slash go. Again, you can apply if you want to work with me one-on-one -on -one and you're not one of the first 10, you can go ahead and apply at this link. And I've got another bonus and this is really exciting. For anybody that joins me in this pre-launch group, I've decided that I want you to have immediate access to my Pajama Grandma Expert Secrets Coaching Mastermind. It is a $4,997 course and mastermind group and coaching that I offer right at this site you can see below. You can go check it out there and you can see that it is $4,997. I will give anybody that joins during this pre-launch phase free access to that. You can start doing that immediately. You can start really honing in on and finding out what your genius zone is, what your area of expertise is, and how you can use that to supersize and just catapult the success that you'll have with the supersized business program. Again, what are you going to get? 
Supersize Business Masterclass, $24,997 value. Supersize Tools, $9,997 value. Supersize Secret Studies, a $2,797 value. Supersize Swipes, $2,597 value. Supersize Secret Systems, a $1,997 value. Plus, bonus number one, if you're one of the first 10, $14,997 value. Bonus number two, which is the same price as what I'm offering this to you for today, is a $4,997 value of Pajama Grandma Expert Secrets Coaching Masterclass, Mastermind, Coaching Mastermind, Coaching Mastermind, all for $4,997 by going to supersizebusiness.com slash go. You can get started today, guys. Go right now. Hurry. Do not stop. Pass and go. I feel like I'm playing Monopoly, which is all about supersizing your business, right? Still haven't beat my son at Monopoly. He's the only one I know who can win Monopoly every time. He's got a supersized business brain, though. I decided, well, I'm going to offer this bonus. And then I also have added, I believe I put a slide up for this. We'll see next. Um, bonus number three, anybody, I want to make sure that you all get into our Supersize Your Business closed group. And so bonus number three is everybody will get an invitation to that closed group. So what are you going to get? Supersize Business Masterclass, $24,997 value. Supersize Tools, $9,997 value. Secret Studies, $2,797 value. Swipes, $2,597 value. Supersize Secret Systems, a $1,997 value. Total value of $42,385 plus all the bonuses that more than double and triple the offer. and quad Yeah, they have more than quadruple the asking price of $4,997. Today, you can get it by going to supersizebusiness.com slash go. And now I'm going to give you the opportunity to ask me anything. I'm probably going to switch back to um, the regular screen so that we can see it. But this will stop. Oh, here's what I did add a slide for it. I'll go back to Q&A in a minute. Super special assessment. I am offering... 75% off the done for you beginning part of the assessment. So for just $2,497, it's regularly $19,997. You can see that on my website. I've created this as the order bump. So when you order the um, Super Size Business Secrets Masterclass and join us, you can actually take advantage of this order bump and we will actually do the whole first part, the whole assessment the whole first three steps for you. Of course, you have to answer some questions, but we'll do it for you. We'll do all the market research and all those things for you so that you don't have to do it. This is regularly $20,000. I charge my corporate clients way more than $20,000 to do this, but today as the order bump, you could get this for $24.97. Again, there is the, um, if you want, you'll have to fill out an application as part of that. So there is the link to the application as well so that we've got the basic information so that we can actually do that for you. And I'm going to tell you right now, we won't accept everybody for $24.97. Um, if you've got a really big business already and a really complicated business already, well, we might still do that for you. But if you are not ready to do this work, we're going to tell you and we'll give you your money back. We're not going to, we're not going to let you do it. If your business isn't ready based on the answers to those questions, we'll let you know and then we won't do it. 